Right, I think this is going to be quite a long video this week. We've got a new chain and sprocket set to install, a new Cush drive, and a couple of nice sparkly bits from Motone Customs. Now, in part seven, we did save quite a little bit of money because the two Motone Custom parts that we installed didn't amount to an awful lot of cash. So, in this payday project, we decided to push the boat out a little bit and use some of the cash that we had in reserve and fit a new chain and sprocket set. The original one was still serviceable and as far as I could tell it was still within specification but it wasn't a particularly aesthetically pleasing chain in the first place and it was looking a little bit dog-eared also. For a custom bike, in my opinion, the race sprocket was just the basic factory item and it was looking a little bit tired and at seven years old it made sense as well for the cush drive to be replaced because the rubber certainly wasn't going to be at its best at that age we're also going to be fitting one of Moton customs chain guards this is an aluminium item one of two designs that Moton make i believe this one is also available in brushed aluminium it's very modern and angular compared to the original factory guard and it has a slightly more minimalist look to it as does the front sprocket cover now this particular front sprocket cover is something a little bit special you may have seen these before in a brushed aluminium finish or painted black and in the short space of time that these have been available I think it has been commented by many people that as far as custom built front sprocket covers are concerned this one probably represents the best possible quality that you can buy currently available on the market now this one is a one-off it's being chrome plated by Moton especially for this project but I did hear a little whisper from them a few weeks ago that they were actually so pleased with it that they may actually be releasing a limited edition of 10 of these in the near future which makes sense because there are quite a lot of the old bonnies around with the chrome plated engine casings and I also believe that they are bringing out a polished aluminium version too now this once again is a precision high pressure die cast aluminium cover something that Moton are becoming renowned for and something that a lot of other manufacturers tend to steer clear of because of the investment costs in actually producing something like this it is factory or better than factory quality and I think all in all once we've got these parts assembled and put on I'm really pleased with the results it really has changed the turn of the bike so we better get on with it right first of all I think I have mentioned this before Haynes manual for the Triumph Bonneville T100 I did rely on this quite heavily for this particular part of the project and it was a godsend it gives a complete list of of torque measurements needed for completing this task and the procedures and the order in which to carry this job out some people might find this a little bit old-fashioned sort of having a manual reading a book in order to carry a job out rather than just letting someone show you how to do it on YouTube but I do find it quite reassuring to have something like this on hand for any part of a project like this now it doesn't go into much detail about fitting the actual chain itself but I will go through that with you. So first of all you are going to have to remove the factory chain guard, the front sprocket cover. For the T100 in order to get access to the rear axle bolt you're going to have to remove both silencers. You might get away with just the right hand one but for what's involved in actually taking them off I just removed both. You either need to get the bike up on its centre stand if it has one, if it doesn't have one you're going to need a jack and you're going to need to get at least the back end of the bike up off the ground if not the entire bike. Right in order the first job that you need to do is slacken off the nut that retains the front sprocket in place. This is held in place with a lock washer which is basically just a large washer which is bent over in a way that prevents the nut from turning while the bike is in use and you'll just need a hammer and a blunt chisel or something like an old flat bladed screwdriver just to gently knock this flat straighten it up and get it out of the way so that you can actually loosen the 36 millimeter nut off now we got the chain and sprockets from Wii Moto and I did actually notice later on their site that a new lock washer and in fact the retaining nut don't cost a lot at all I think the lock washer is just pennies and the nuts about £1.50 or something silly on reflection I should have just got 
replacements while I was at it but I didn't think at the time. So if you do choose to go down this route of reusing the washer just gently tease it flat. You don't have to hit it hard just gently flatten it out so that you can actually turn the nut. Once you've got that back and out of the way you're gonna need a decent size breaker bar and a 36 millimeter socket. Now the way I did it was to apply a good firm pressure on the rear brake with my foot while slackening the nut off. There is quite a lot of torque on this nut but with a decent breaker bar you will get it off without too much hassle. You then need to break the chain. Now most of the larger capacity bikes these days have heavy duty chains on them and your average DIY chain breaker isn't going to be able to handle those hardened pins that are used. So get yourself a grinder and carefully just grind off the head of the chosen pin that you're going to remove. Then use your chain breaker to take the pin out. Now because we're changing the sprockets I chose to remove the chain at this stage and once I'd got it out of the way I also removed the nut and the washer from the front sprocket and swapped the sprocket. Now as I said we got the chain and sprocket set from Wiimoto which I think has got to be one of the best one stop shops for all your consumable hardware on a T100 and for that matter just about any other make or model of bike on the road. Now I took their advice uh, for a common conversion that people tend to undertake with the old air cooled Bonnevilles and that is that we reduce the front sprocket down from 18 teeth to 17 teeth and correspondingly increase the rear sprocket from 43 teeth to 44 and I'll tell you more about the effect that that had a little bit later on in the video. Now we replaced the sprockets with Sunstar sprockets and these are actually the same manufacturer that Triumph uses at the factory although as you will see especially with the rear sprocket these are of considerably better quality and look much nicer than the originals. Obviously don't attempt to torque your front sprocket up yet we'll do that later on when we get the new chain on. Now the next thing you need to do is remove the rear wheel. I've got to admit this is a bit of a faffing about on your own and it would help greatly if you had somebody to assist you with this and putting the wheel back. Back on. Now once you've got the nut off slide your spindle out and you should be able to remove your wheel. Place the wheel sprocket side up onto a couple of bits of wood supporting the tyre and the rim on either side of your brake disc so that your brake disc doesn't contact the floor. Then carefully remove the bolts that hold the sprocket in place. Once you've removed the bolts, do any clean up work or housekeeping that you feel the need to do and place your new sprocket the right side up onto the studs. Put a dab of Loctite onto each of the studs and then replace the bolts, tightening them up in an opposite star rotation. Once the nuts have actually contacted your rear sprocket, you can then take a good quality torque wrench and using the same pattern, torque them all up to 55 Newton meters. Now all chain driven bikes have a cush drive and as the name might suggest this is a series of small rubber cushions that help to dampen the inertia when the power is transmitted from the sprocket to the rear wheel. Now, I think I can safely say that of all the bikes I've worked on and owned over the years your cush drive is probably the most neglected part of any motorcycle's drive chain. A lot of people don't even know it's there let alone contemplate maintenance or replacement. Now for the past seven years this bike is what I always think of as a garage queen in that it's rarely been used it's just sat in the corner of a garage looking pretty and mechanically in most respects it is like brand new but the problem with all rubber parts on a motorcycle is that they perish with age and in my view any cush drive should be replaced after at least five years rubber does shrink and harden up with age and I noticed right from the start with this bike that the transmission was very snatchy. So as I said earlier on, while we've got the back wheel off, it made sense to change the cush drive. Again, Wiimoto supplied me with a pattern cush drive for the T100 made by Sharing Rubber of Germany. And this is quite typical of the high quality products that Wiimoto stock. Now to get it off, you simply pull the sprocket carrier up away from the wheel. 
if your cush drive is healthy, it will be the devil's own job getting it off. But if it's on its way out, it should slide out reasonably easy like this one did. And it's literally just a two minute job to swap it. It's out with the old cush drive and then carefully fit the new cush drive. Now the cush drive is designed to be a tight fit and they can sometimes require a little bit of persuading to get them back into the place and reassemble the wheel ready for refitting. Some red rubber grease or some other similar rubber lubricant is definitely the order of the day here otherwise you really will struggle. Rather than smear it all over the place what I prefer to do is just put a sort of medium to heavy smear of grease over the top of the blades in the wheel then position the sprocket carrier with the cush drive fitted over the top of it and as you push the cush drive down it will self lubricate. Don't use too much lubricant because that means that your cush drive will by nature of the fact that it's flexible slide around quite a lot which can promote premature wear and once you've pressed it firmly back into place it's time to refit the wheel. Now don't talk your wheel up at this point, just position your adjusters to the, about the halfway point and it's now time to fit the new chain. We chose a rather nice golden black DID 525 VX chain for this project. It looks absolutely fantastic, it's a heavy duty chain and of course it's DID so that you know it's top quality. Obviously I had removed the old chain so it was a matter of threading this chain on manually but it wasn't a problem because access to everything was easy. I don't think there's really a right way or a wrong way around for a chain but for aesthetic reasons just take note of which way up the writing is and decide whether you want that to be right way up when it's at the top or right way up when it's at the bottom of the chain run. Now fitting a chain is really quite easy and straightforward but I know that it does strike terror into the hearts of a lot of people and I think that's mainly because over the last 20 or 30 years the method of fixing a chain together has changed considerably from uh, you know certainly when I was a kid. I was a little apprehensive myself because to be honest I've not fitted a chain for about 25 years but it does soon come back to you. Now I'm not going to talk about chain breakers and riveters because there are literally hundreds of them on the market some are good some are not you choose for yourself which one you want to use but what I would say is you can make mistakes the DID chain comes with a rivet link for fitting it together once you've attached the chain they don't cost an awful lot of money they're about three pounds forty or something like that my advice is whenever you buy one of these chains always buy a spare link because that way if you do make a mistake and something goes wrong you've got another one to fall back on also it's always handy to have one in reserve now this is an x-ring chain uh, and it doesn't matter whether it's an x-ring chain a wiring chain a z-ring chain I, I don't care they're all basically o-ring chains and the o-rings on chains have one very specific function on each link you have a hollow roller pin and inside that roller pin attaching it to the next link is another pin now in the old days when you lubricated a chain the object of the game was to get lubricant in between where these two pins touch each other because that is where most of the wear on a chain takes place now a few decades ago someone came up with the bright idea that you could pack that space with a high quality grease at the factory and then seal it in for the life of the chain so it lubricated the chain for the life of the chain this was a brilliant idea and it works really well but in order to seal it it needs to be fitted with an o-ring at each end of the pins where they're fastened together and the function of this o-ring is to keep the grease in and keep the water and weather out now i have had a look on youtube at people putting these chains together with your kit you'll get your spare link, a face plate, four o-rings and a little sachet of grease. And I've seen people do all sorts of things with grease except put it where it needs to be. Now basically the purpose of this grease is that it be packed in that space between your rivet pin and your hollow roller pin and you need to get as much of it in there as you possibly can and there are various methods of doing that in this case I just put a liberal amount of it on each of the rivet pins spread it around a little bit to make sure that the rivet pins were liberally coated with it before inserting the rivet pins into the hollow roller then once your o-rings in place and your face plate has been riveted into place 
that grease is trapped in there. Just bear in mind, if you skip this step, there is no way of getting any lubricant in between those two pins after the chain has been riveted. And running the chain with this link dry means it will fail and you will be really lucky if you even manage to get 5,000 miles out of the chain. Now, you're gonna need a pair of electronic calipers for this job. You don't need to spend an awful lot of money on them. You can pick some perfectly serviceable ones up for under five pounds on Amazon. Using your tool, press it into place. Take your time with this, do it a little bit at a time, then keep taking your press off and examining your progress. This face plate needs to be pushed on evenly, and basically it needs to line up with all the other face plates on the chain. If you don't have an electronic caliper, another good way of gauging it is to get a perfectly straight, flat edge, something that you can trust, and offer it up to the chain with this link in the middle. That way you'll be able to see if it's either proud or it's been pushed on too far. Once you're happy that you've got that bit right, it's time to rivet your pins up. Now, before you start riveting these pins up, first of all, just physically check to make sure that this link moves freely, that it's not been pinched and it's not stiff anywhere. And throughout the riveting process until you reach your final values, keep checking it to make sure it hasn't tightened up. It should be just as free as the other links at the end of this operation. Now, my recommendation is, it usually it takes about one full turn of the screw to actually rivet a link in. There is an optimum value that the pin should be riveted out to. The pins are around five millimeters in diameter. When you've finished riveting it, it should be about 5.5 millimeters. So you're only talking about a quarter of a millimeter split on either side. The sensible way to go about this is to do a quarter of a turn on each rivet at a time, check it, to make sure that it hasn't tightened up and also check the values with your calipers and monitor the progress. After doing these quarter turns three to four times, it should have reached its optimum amount of splay. Don't be tempted to take it any further for good measure because you are, in all likelihood, going to damage or weaken the pin if you do that. The final part of this operation now is to tighten up your front sprocket using a good quality, dependable torque wrench. You use the same process as you actually did when you were loosening the nuts. Put your foot on the rear brake, and then tighten it up to 132 newton meters using your torque wrench. Then carefully bend that lock washer or tab washer over to hold the nut in place so that it doesn't move during the bike's operation. You then need to adjust your chain to the recommended slack, tighten your rear spindle nut up to 85 newton meters, and then recheck everything, make sure that your chain is running straight and true. Using the original factory screws, it's now time for the fun bit, and that's fitting the Motone Customs chain guard. Now this chain guard is designed to work in conjunction with the normal factory shock absorbers, but of course I've got these rather meaty Hagen Nitro piggyback shocks fitted, so I had to modify it slightly to get it to fit by just removing the bottom cross member. Fitting is quite straightforward and it literally just takes a couple of minutes. As with all the other versions of this sprocket cover, the chrome sprocket cover comes with its own set of stainless steel screws and washers. It also comes with a small stainless grub screw. As this is a custom cut back version of the sprocket cover, not all of the threads on the engine casings are required for fitting it. There is one spare at the bottom left hand corner. Motone have supplied this grub screw to screw into place to protect the threads from the elements. And I would recommend that you fit this first. It's then just a matter of using the stainless steel screws, which are an Allen head type bolt, along with the supplied washers to fit your Motone sprocket cover. Again, this only takes a couple of minutes and each of these bolts needs to be tightened up to nine Newton meters. Now I should mention that this particular cover didn't come with any mesh behind the two open slots. I know some of the other versions do. I don't know what Motone have got planned for the special edition version. What I use for this is I just got some 1.2 millimeter brass mesh from the internet cut it to shape and then fasten it in place using some two-part epoxy resin. And I have to say, I am rather pleased with the results. Now 
Now things are starting to come along with this bike. And for me, this part of the project has been a complete transformation, not just aesthetically, but also in the way the bike now rides. We Motor were invaluable with the advice and expertise that they offered me here to make the right selection for these sprockets and the chain. It not only looks a million dollars, but it feels like a million dollars when you're riding it. It is now silky smooth, and that cush drive has eliminated all the snatchiness that the bike originally had. It's been at the expense of top end performance, but let's face it, the T100 is not a bike that is about top end performance. But the change in gearing afforded by these sprockets have now greatly improved low and mid-range acceleration. The bike feels totally different. It did always strike me from the outset that in stop and start traffic, I often had to give it a little bit more throttle than I felt comfortable with. And you always had to slip the clutch slightly to get a clean takeoff. That has gone now. And the bike just feels so much better. It feels right. Now, I will leave a link down in the video description for both of these Moton Customs parts that I've used. And also for the websites of Wii Moto and Haynes Publishing for those who are interested. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you've also found it useful. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Now, the weather's been a little bit iffy this week and I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing on Friday, but I will be back on Friday. So until then, ride safely and I'll see you soon.